You want his gear to get real fucked up? Not really. Okay. Is there a level cap? Uh, there's a soft cap at 11. I don't know past that. I think probably not. I don't think there's a hard level cap, but the levels are very not impactful after level 11. They don't do anything. Alright, sell junk. Junk it is. Okay. Where does the boat bring us? Grafenhaven and Sandorf. Where's Sandorf? There's Grafenhaven. Where's Sandorf, though? Oh, there. Alright, let's head west. Oh, we can clear out the Necros Avance while we're up here. It's almost camp of time. Okay. Alright, through to midnight. Okay. Hey, I am gonna bring a uh, TH Jazzy to this. I'm just gonna give him a shield and a sword. Fuck, I don't even have a sword for him because I just gave up my last noble sword. I'm just gonna give TH Jazzy a shield and he's just gonna stand there. Shield and a dagger. And he's gonna live the dream. Shield, a dagger, and a dog. The man is ready. And then we're gonna go kill all those wolf riders again. Anyone's gear not totally repaired? I think we're doing okay. Let's grab it. Oh, I should switch to the proper shield, shouldn't I? Okay. Question about what now? I think a dedicated two-handed axe guy might be worth it. I have a hard time imagining that because I don't really tend to get surrounded with an axe. Like to 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 AOE with an axe, you need to be have none of your allies touching you, and that's a lot harder to do. We do need goblin camps. We have to kill four goblin camps because uh, we have their quests, and I want to be immune. Some some of my guys be immune to root. It's like the most annoying ability ever. Wolf Riders having a grand old time. Enjoyed that. See if I can get them to come engage Gibo on the flanks. Alright. Are they out already? No, they're just long flanking. I wonder if it's always, some of them always take two rounds to engage because they long flank for so long. And it feels like a smart play when you're running a real defensive strategy, but like here it just looks like, why don't they attack me? Yep, Thunderstorm in the background. It's part of what I couldn't get back to sleep from. Not much, but just a little bit of an impact. Alright. Just do dagger him.
if they'll be coming back. Or if they're gone. It's kind of like they're not really wanting to engage. What the fuck was that? I always get surprised in the morning when I'm up early and I'm doing something on my computer and the auto update kicks in. Like what? Uh, the auto backup, brother. Uh, looks like it's going okay. Are they actually gonna engage? managed to find an annoying position at the end of all this. So that's good for them. Smack him. See if Aqua wants to get overrun over there or not. Just in case they decide to do something. Good fight, good fight. No level up there, unfortunately. Going up to kill the Necro Savants. Oh, look, it updated. It added Ancient Auxiliaries. This is where we got our last Legendary Helm from, though, was a fight very much like that. The fight could be, could be fun. this guy not to die doesn't have I want his levels though and his stats weren't so amazing that if he does die I'll be the end of the world so we're gonna be fighting auxiliaries while fighting uh, uh, necro savants okay it's megas I like three megas versus necro savants We'll drop duelist for this and run two handers plus three megas. Looks good. No archers. It's questionable whether or not I want the bannerman in a fight like this. Just feels like the bannerman's there in case something goes really wrong. So we'll bring him. How's everyone's gear? Aqua needs to be in bigger stuff than 230. I think I'm just going to sword spec him. Sitting here wondering what I'm going to do with the guy. And he's fighting with the sword all this time. 96, has that changed my mind at all? Because he's got the highest accuracy of any of the two-handers. Kind of does argue for, uh, look at that. 93, 93, 93, 94. Like, that's how well that all worked out. 
96 in Aqua. He is the most accurate of all the guys. I don't know. Yeah, the, the Megas are really good. It's a really solid build. It just does a lot to anchor your team. Uh, don't need the banner. I like the bannerman continuing to level, though. I like him being in every single fight, leveling, leveling, leveling. Since he's pretty much the most important guy on the team. We don't have a backup bannerman. I guess it's possible he might... I don't know. I think it's okay. Question is, what do I want Aqua to be? Do I want him to be... Axe, sword, or mace. I think I have the sword now. I think I'm just going to take it. The thing is, the sword has plus hit on it. These do not. I kind of want it to be... Uh, kind of want it to be a mace. I didn't buy a mace on the way out. Uh, Alright, what do we have for 230 is too low. to give him something bigger. 240, do we have anything bigger than that? 285, seems reasonable. One of the rest of our guys in, pretty heavy. 285 on Kex, more than that there. This is 260 on Kalios. One of the Megas in. 260. 320, 320. Alright. I don't know. I don't know if we want to run anything else with this or not. I kind of want to take this spec. Hey, Doomsday. Here place our low fatigue duelist to find sword masters with fatigue stars. I'm considering it, Kex. If I can, I've been considering rolling on cell swords too. But if I look at the, I haven't looked at the battle build, uh, BB builds here for a while. But uh, I'm pretty sure we can get decent cell swords too. If I look at the all game, I mean, the thing is, yeah, cell swords are pretty high up there too for the all game DPS tanks. And I have walked by a couple cell swords. I mean, we could just be really greedy in our rolls, what we're looking for. It really depends on what we're trying to do. I mean, we do need a little bit more stamina on those guys. Didn't work out quite as well. When they get old, they're going to be annoying. Uh, by the way, with a retired soldier and a swordmaster, I've had zero training events this playthrough. Just kind of... The events are so rare, I just don't even think that they should be part of the background considerations. Except maybe for the cultist. Okay. So, the question is, do I take this now or not? I'm going to take Recover. I think I will sword spec him. Alright. Done. Go to it. Sword spec worth it? Yeah. Brings the AoE cost down from 30 to 23 and brings your regular swing cost down from 15 to 12 as well as gives you 5% accuracy on like all your AoE attacks, which is a pretty big deal. All of those things. I absolutely think 200 spec is worth it. Alright, I hate elevation when I'm fighting Necro Savants. It almost always just fucks you. Yeah, it's exactly why you take sword spec is for the fatigue reduction. I don't give a shit about repost at all. I, I haven't found that ability to be useful whatsoever.
Yeah, we have a monk. I'm a bit worried our monk is going to be sacrificed by a... Uh... Uh, by uh, our cultist. I wonder how many necros of months there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's at least 7. It can multi-trigger. It's only triggered. It's triggered already this playthrough. Yep. All right. Normally, I just run from Nec uh, Necro Savants for a turn or two to get a little distance, but I don't really feel like relocating. So I'll just fight this as it is. Indomitable here, right? Yeah. Okay. I feel like they're gonna line up over this way. Okay, next round, the Necro Savants attack. Maybe I should have rushed these guys instead. I wonder what would happen if I went forward instead of back. Just with the guys on the outside with the elevations versus the fucking Necro Savants. So they are coming. Could walk over there and attack him. Right there, I guess. Alright, let's see what happens here. Hello, Necro Savants. I understand the question, Nikonon. What are you asking? To have an enemy archer expo drop their range, oh, their range weapons, they have to have it out? Uh, I don't think so. Dark flight. Yep, there's that high ground they all liked. Alright, where did the rest of them end up? Rotate in. Uh, not yet, though. End of the turn, we can do that. I 
Okay, this is what I wanted to do. Oh, I want to taunt though, don't I? Guess we are still waiting there, still waiting there. See what we can control in a minute. Let's take a shot there. It's unfortunate. This way, this way. Okay. That's probably fine. Just ram some damage into that guy. Just propped uh, his. lines. There's another one over here. Okay, so what are we doing? We're rotating in here, smashing this guy with the hammer. Stagger doesn't seem to affect them for some reason. They don't get staggered the next round at all. And now it's taunt time. One, two. Kill just Dodd. Three, four, and Gujer. Five, six. Okay. They have Impatient Perk. Impatient only goes for the first round, though. Impatient's not something that lets them go every round. So if they have some ability that lets them go first every single round, it's not one that we have access to. I do wish their attack animations were a little faster too. I watched another streamer, um, not last night, but the night before. The one who was doing the uh, monolith one. And I think it was him, but maybe I was watching two streams at the same time, so I'm not sure if it was him or another one. But uh, they had uh, they had enemy, they didn't have fast enemy animations on, or fast, or your own fast animations on. It just felt so slow watching, I'm like, holy crap. Alright. Oh yeah, Taunt's super good versus Necro Savants. They didn't attack anyone I care about, they attack all my Megas, they get to focus their damage on the targets that are most resistant to it. No, I like it a lot. Proc some 9 lives. This is actually slightly problematic. Because every time you get attacked, even if they miss, you get stamina added to you. I want to kill this. I think I'm going to kill this. So I can kill both. Alright. That was a good use of Berserk for sure. It's a miss there. It's a little bit sad. There. Put that guy. So the taunts will hold on to them. Can I AoE these in some way? No. Good. I thought he was lower health than he was. Damn. Okay, so it's just the Megas left. I think these two can attack me there, it's fine. And I think uh, you're already surrounded. We can bring you over here. 
You can stay right where you are. And you can come to me. And I can take one swing there. Okay. I got a guy with stars and only range attack in both defenses with 114 stamina and iron lungs. Well, it's not the stars alone that make a difference, it's also the base starting value, so I'd want to hear kind of more about what his stats were like before I'd make a decision on that. Stars just represent growth. That's all they represent. So sometimes if you start real high on something, you don't really care what the growth represents because you're going to take that anyway. Because it still works out better. Many guys over here. Not enough guys over there. Why are you so fucking alive? I don't have enough damage to kill the Necros Avants because they're too far away from where my taunts are. That would be really nice for next turn. Berserk has been good this fight. Alright. Who's more beat up? You're at two, 232 and 223. Pretty much equally beat up. Keep that one there. Kind of like them lined up like that for the AoE next turn. So I think that would do. We'll take another shot there. Oh, killed it. Never mind. Should have taken the shot first, but I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do. Oh, I don't have enough for two taunts. Damn. All right, one of these Necrosophons can go where it wants. Annoyingly. I'm messing up my AoE and taking them high ground. I know I can't attack two elevations up, so that's a totally pointless move. That's not, though. Okay, positioning problems, taking forever to get them where I need them to be. Alright, not bad, not bad. Loot's bad though. Too bad, 